Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT coming to you live and direct on Google Hangout. Uh, True School Sports, as always. You know, first of all, uh, I know tonight there was no like big boxing fights on, but there was a a card going on. There was a notable fighter in action tonight. Uh, Jesse Hart of Philadelphia, super, super middleweight up and comer. Um, he had a fight tonight. It was actually not on TV, but it was streamed on. Uh, Go Fight Live or GFL for short. GoFightLiveTV.com, and uh, you can get for fifteen dollars. You could purchase that card. It had nine fights on it. Um, you know, mostly local Philadelphia guys and a couple of like guys from you know, mainly just Philadelphia fighters, but a lot of good fights, a lot of good action fights. Um, some gatekeepers. Uh, the only two guys really knew on the card was Jesse Hart, who fought in the main event, and Mike Reed, who fought in the co-main event. So with that being said. Um, I wasn't too familiar familiar with a lot of the fighters on the car, but for fifteen dollars and getting nine fights, you know, a, a lot of them being ending in knockout fashion, you couldn't beat it. So with that being said, I wanted to get into the Jesse Hart fight tonight. Now, if you're those of you who don't know Jesse Hart, Jesse Hart is a guy coming up in the middleweight division right now. He fights under the top rank banner. Uh, he came into this fight tonight nineteen to zero with sixteen knockouts. He's a six foot three, long, rangy. Boxer puncher with mobility. He seems like the total package and anything you'd want in a fighter now. Coming into tonight, he had not lost a round in his whole professional career. He had pretty much been successful every fight he's had. You know, not not, not the best of opposition because as he's, he's a prospect, you know, they're still building him up. You know, I think his the most notable name on his resume would probably be against Aaron Pryor Jr. Uh, Aaron Pryor Jr. was the only guy that he's fought that was taller than him, and he was able to get the win in that fight. So. Um, he had a fight tonight, and if he, if he was able to win it, he would get the winner of Arthur Abraham versus Gilberto, uh, Gilberto Ramirez, um, and, and he'll get a shot at a title later on against whoever wins that fight. He'll fight, he'll fight for the title because um, that, that, that's the title fight, fight for the winner of that fight, whatever. But Deshaun Johnson, you know, he came into this fight tonight 19-18 and 18 with six knockouts, so a veteran in the game, a guy that, you know, is, is a uh, he, he came to fight. And uh, if you look at Deshaun Johnson's resume, you know, like I said before, 19-8-3 with six KOs, not a big puncher. He came into the ring, he came into the ring standing at 5-9, which is about six, five or six inches smaller than Jesse Hart. So, you know, he was at, at, a, at a physical disadvantage tonight. But uh, just as far, as far as his resume goes, he has a history of taking fights on short notice. He once fought the likes of, uh, you know, he's fought the likes of, likes of Glenn Tapia, Jamal Charlo, Dominic Wade, Julian Williams. Um, and Aaron Martinez. So he's been in there with some names that we're, we're, we're familiar with as boxing fans. Um, and very few people, he's, he only has two knockout losses. I know one of them was to Julian Williams, and the other one I forgot which who knocked him out. But, um, you know, credit to uh, Deshaun Johnson. He he came in here very as a very game opponent tonight. And honestly, had he had 10 to 20 more seconds, you know, we, we could be sitting and talking about how Jesse Hart took his first loss because it was that close of a fight. Now, um, early in the fight, first four to five rounds, Jesse Hart, or four, 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 I would say first five to six rounds, Jesse Hart was going in there. He was showing good mobility, uh, good punch placement, you know, good, basically everything you'd want to see a guy. He looked, like, he looked like a guy that's been in a boxing gym his whole life, which he is. And he went in there, you know, stuck the jab out there, worked off the jab, hit the body, threw lots of uppercuts. Um, really. I think if, uh, if he was fighting a lesser man tonight, we would be talking about how this was a sensational knockout victory. Victory, But because Deshaun Johnson came, it was so tough, and he has so much big fight experience. Yeah, I know he's lost all of his step-up fights, but he has so much big fight experience that, you know, him, fight, him fighting against a guy like Jesse Hart wasn't going to phase him. And we saw in the seventh round, uh, they didn't count it, but he did put Jesse Hart on the canvas. Um, and then... You know, this guy just kept coming forward. He didn't really show a lot of he, – he, he didn't move side to side. He didn't show a whole lot, a lot of lateral movement. But what he did show was the, um, the ability to not be discouraged. He kept coming forward. And eventually, once he took Jesse Hart into those deep waters, we saw Jesse Hart not just get hit flush and get hit cleanly with a lot of punches, but, you know, get damaged by a lot of punches. He had a cut in, um, on, right here on his left eye, a really noticeable cut. And he was in danger of losing this fight. Uh, he got put down in the last 15 seconds of the uh, last round, which was the 10th round. And uh, Deshaun Johnson, he fought his heart out. But 
And, and what, what it really came down to was could if, if Jesse Hart was in, in, unable to get up, he would have lost the fight. But he did get up, and that's why he won. So Jesse Hart showed a lot of heart, and Deshaun Johnson fought his heart out as well. So I think this is a good experience for Jesse Hart. He, he came out, he got the victory, yes, but mm-hmm. he did show, show some chinks in the armor. There is a um, somewhat of a blueprint out there to beat him. Uh, and that blueprint is pressure him or at least get him past the deep, the the, the, the at least seventh, eighth round, somewhere in that range. Get him to the seventh, eighth round. Push him in the deep waters. And if you got, if you have punching power that mm-hmm. carries over to those late rounds, if your fighter has the conditioning to knock out someone in the late rounds, you know you can beat Jesse Hart. So that's really the formula. Deshaun Johnson laid it all out there tonight, and I think this is good for Jesse Hart because. This might force opponents to fight him now if they weren't if they didn't want to fight him moving forward. And um, you know Jesse Hart, uh, I like him, but I would say that he started head hunting a little bit. He punched punch placement, like I said, wherever he threw his punches, you know he's good at landing them. He's good at throwing combinations, but he's not the best at going to the body. And had he went to the body a little bit earlier, I don't think Deshaun Johnson uh, would have kept coming forward. But that, like I said, you, you learned, he, that, it was a good experience. And when you're coming up as a fighter, you need these kinds of experience. You need to fight guys who are tough, guys who come to win, guys who can put you on the canvas. And, you know, a loss would have been very damaging psychologically. I think even getting put on the canvas could be very damaging psychologically. But because he got the win, I think this experience will go will, will, will serve him very well moving forward. Um, and, I, you know, look, if you're a boxing fan, and I know there's – Plenty of people out there, casual people, casual fans, hardcore fans. I don't know. There's, there's plenty of people out there who are saying, "Who's going to be that next guy?" As far as a mainstream star, and I'm not saying that Jesse Hart's going to be that guy. But if you're looking at a guy who would have the qualities of being a mainstream star, I think Jesse Hart definitely fits the bill. For one, he's got a very good, outspoken, entertaining personality. If you've ever watched his interviews, go watch his interviews with uh, Philadelphia boxing writer George Hanson Jr. Uh, I think. It's under the channel named Chris Tony. Check those interviews out with Jesse Hart. Those are great interviews to get a gauge on who Jesse Hart is. Um, you know, so his personality. I would say uh, definitely the fact that he comes to you know fight. He, he he can do a little bit of everything. He can box. He can move. He can definitely punch. You know, judging by his knockout percentage. And if you go out and look through his highlights, he's just an exciting fighter. And I, I think uh, his next fight with whoever wins the Abraham Ramirez fight uh, will be a good one. And if he's able to win that fight and get a title, um, then I think then there's, there's a clear path to start and laid out for him. He has, you know, obviously I think he did a great job tonight doing with what a lot of Philadelphia boxing stars just don't have the power to do or can't do, which is fight in Philly. You know, there's plenty of fighters today from the city of Philadelphia that are, that are active and that are notable fighters. You know, you have guys like Hank Lundy, Brian Jennings, Danny Garcia, uh, Julian Williams, you know, they're great fighters. Don't, don't don't get it twisted, but they're not really fighting in Philly. And I think because he brought, you know, albeit it wasn't at a big venue, he, he didn't fight at the uh, you know the Wells Fargo Center. But I think he 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 could always work his way towards that. Um, you know, he did sell 1,000 roughly 1,300 tickets tonight at the 2300 Arena. So, you know, he sold out the venue. That's a good gauge. It's a good starting point for him. And uh, he brought a fight. He's bringing fights back to Philly. Philly is a it, it produces a lot of fighters, but for, for whatever reason, there just hasn't been guys from Philadelphia fighting in Philadelphia. So, I think there's a clear path to start him for, laid out for him because he can now not just expand his brand, um, you know, within the city, but he has a personality, he has a fighting style um, to, to to make himself a, a star internationally as long as he gets right fights. I think. Obviously, he, he should probably get a, more, a little bit more experienced. Um, you know, he does have a good amateur background. He beat the likes of Antoine Douglas. He beat um, Daquan Arnett, all in the um, amateurs, I think, Daquan Arnett and Antoine Douglas. So it's not like this guy's a scrub. It's not like he doesn't have experience on the amateur level, but he has a good amateur background. But what I'm saying is I think he should take another two or three more tough fights before he – before he, uh, after if he, if he beats Abraham or Gilberto or Ramirez, I have no problem with him. You know, taking a fight or two to get more experience, and you know, as long as it's against solid opposition. So, you know, Jesse Hart, man, 
he came to win. I mean, he, he uh, a lot a lot of people thought he was gonna blow through Deshaun Johnson. You know, a guy that stylistically was a huge at a huge disadvantage. Not a big puncher. Okay, six inches shorter. Um, and he's going to the guy's backyard. You know, there's, there's a lot of disadvantages going against Deshaun mm -hmm. Johnson. But credit to him. He's actually pretty well versed in the in the world of fighting. You know, Deshaun Johnson. If you guys don't know, and I only know this because I saw it on his Facebook page, and then I looked it up. He's also an MMA fighter. He actually uh, he fights. He's fought in the UFC, I believe, from what I researched. Uh, and he has a record of nine and two as an MMA, MMA fighter. And he also fight. He also does boxing. So that, that's pretty interesting. I never. I, I didn't hear the announcer say anything about how Deshaun Johnson is uh, does MMA and boxing when I was watching the fight. But it was pretty cool to hear that so you know we know that he can fight if you if you're doing both of those you're a good athlete and you can fight so you know i i really didn't think that he was going to get past the fifth or sixth round the way the fight was going but uh you could definitely see the steam off of jesse hart's punches coming off slowly but surely and um you know once they did he started coming forward and started piecing up jesse hart so you know what's going to happen when a guy like you know who can punch like an abraham uh, you know, Ramirez has eyes and pop too. What, what's gonna happen when these other, when, when these other 168 pounders start punching him? Uh, you know, is he gonna is he gonna go down like that? Because he did show. I know I know Johnson hit him with some shots, but Johnson's not really a, a, a knockout artist like that. His knockout percentage is like 15. percent So with that being said, you know, we gotta we got as much as I like Jesse Hart, we gotta bring his shin into question. So, you know, I, that's what it is. Gotta bring his chin into question. But a guy who only has six knockouts in like 40 professional fights, knocks you to the canvas twice. I know this one of them didn't count, but you did go to the canvas because he punched you after the bell. Um, we gotta quite, we gotta bring his chin into question. And I think Jesse Hart um, has a lot of the skills to really take over the 168 pound division. Now, obviously, if you ask me. I think James Aguil is the best fighter at that weight class because he's the most. He has so many weapons. He can. He he's kind of like Terence Crawford, where he can switch southpaw and orthodox on a dime, but he does it more freely than Crawford. Like Crawford will will, will Terence Crawford will, will will jab you a couple of times. Maybe he'll stay in the, the orthodox stance for a round or two. Then the third round he'll switch to southpaw stance and he won't change the rest of the fight. Whereas Aguil. He's he's throwing two jabs. He's doing two jabs out of the softball stance, and he's coming back as an orthodox. Throwing two jabs as an orthodox, throwing a right, coming back, switching. So he's like that, and I think because of that, guys don't really. It's hard to gauge where his punches are coming from because he's changing the angle so much, and he's showing you so many different looks, and he's got pop. It's like not James Aguilar's not no knockout artist, but he can punch a little bit, and because he has enough power to keep guys honest, along with his ability to. Switch styles on a dime like that, that makes James Ezekiel a very dangerous man for anybody. And like, like, like I said, if you watched, this, if you were, if you knew about this fight and you and you paid the fifteen dollars to to watch these uh, this nine fight card on Go Fight Live TV, um, what's his name? Deshaun Johnson was coming in a straight line. There wasn't really too much, you know, ladder, um, you know, side to side movement or anything like that. He was just coming in a straight line and. He was able to he was able to, to get to Jesse Hart. So if a guy like DeGale, who has such a deep understanding for angles, lateral side to side movement, um, and has power, if, if that guy fights Jesse Hart, how is Jesse Hart going to handle that? Because if, I'm telling you, I, I don't know if, if the highlights are going to be up or where they're going to be up at. But if if if, if they if they post a full fight or um, you get highlights somewhere, watch Deshaun Johnson. He's coming. To, he He's walking forward the whole fight. You're not seeing really too much lateral move, movement from him. And he was able to get to Jesse Hart starting around the seventh round. The first six rounds, Jesse Hart outboxed him, boxed his ears off. But from the seventh round to the tenth round, Deshaun Johnson really had a lot of success against Jesse Hart. So um, I'm not going to be too surprised if, if a guy like DeGale, who has all those angles, can, 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 can get to a guy like Jesse Hart. But with that being said, you know, I mentioned some of the things he's got to improve on. Uh, defensively, he's got to improve, uh, which which should be easy for him if he if he really puts his mind to it. Because Jesse Hart at six foot three can move. He can really move, guys. If you guys haven't watched him fight before, this dude knows how to move around the ring. And you know, once he he incorporates some of that 
movement with his feet, with his head, I think that's when he becomes a more dangerous fighter because then you can see him create more opportunities for pull count, for pull counter punches, um, and just work better on the inside as well. So Jesse Hart does have a lot of work to do, but you know I think the fact that he was able to pull off this win against a tough opponent, you know, really shows um, that he's ready. I don't know if he's ready, but it shows that he can win tough fights. I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to say that he's ready for Arthur Abraham or Gilberto, or Gilberto Ramirez. He has the tools to beat him, but I'm not sure he's ready. He might still be a little, just a little bit too green at this point. He might need another fight like this because, um, like I said, man, the blueprint is there. So, you know, there's guys like him. There's guys like you know, Andre Durrell. If a guy like Andre Durrell, I know it's uh, Al Heyman, so maybe that's not too realistic. But if Al Heyman decided tomorrow to start working with top rank, then he fights a guy like Durrell. Durrell has a lot is, – is kind of – I'm not going to say he's not like Deshaun Johnson, but Durrell's like – he's a volume puncher with pop in his hands. He, he has power. And like I said, Jesse Hart got put on the canvas by a guy who's basically has a 15% knockout percentage. So that's not too encouraging if you're a guy who supports Jesse Hart. And if a guy like Darrell, who's a way better puncher, it's a lot faster, um, more experience on a big fight stage than the other guy like Deshaun Johnson, how is Jesse going to react to that? Now, we uh, Jesse Hart, in a lot of his interviews, he came out and he was saying, you know, Jesse Hart has never lost a professional round, so we got to see how Jesse Hart reacts to losing a round first. Well, when Jesse Hart lost a round... I'll give him his credit. He did fight back. He did throw a lot of combinations. There are almost in instances in the eighth and ninth round where he almost got Sean Johnson out of there. Um, but like I said, he didn't, he didn't he didn't go to the body enough. If a guy like Deshaun Johnson is piecing him up like that, no, I I really would. I know I know he has a title shot coming up, and in boxing you gotta take the title fights, but. I would Jesse Hart, I would almost take two more fights just to keep getting more experience and, and work on my defense and, and work on the things that I need to do to improve because it just wasn't too encouraging. And um, Jesse Hart, you know, I like him. I think he has, like I said, all the skills to take over 168, but he's got work to do. So you know, that, that's just my overall take on the fight. Um, Deshaun Johnson, this is my first time watching him fight. Heard of him, but I never watched him fight. Um, I want to see him fight again. I saw on box rec that he'll be fighting April or May 13th on some in Canada on some random card. So if that's on TV, I want to watch that because they got that kid can fight and he deserves a lot of credit for for, for going in there as a much smaller guy, um, getting out box for six rounds, going to the other guy's backyard and basically just putting on a hell of a fight. He almost had a run. It was like watching Rocky when you watch the Sean Johnson fight tonight. And you know it's it, it's. It's fights like this that remind me why I like boxing. Because even though Jesse Hart was a bigger man, Jesse Hart was the more skilled fighter, Jesse Hart was the heavy favorite, this guy came to win. He didn't care about how tall he was. He didn't care about if he never lost a round. He didn't care about that he was in his backyard. He just came to win. And he didn't just say he's coming to win. He really went out there and showed it. He went for broke. And you got to respect that at the end of the day. So um, Jesse Hart proves a 20-0. Uh, he's going to be getting a title shot with Arthur Abraham and Gilberto Ramirez. He had a really nasty cut in his left eye. So I'm going to be interested to, interested to see if that halts any of his plan plans, maybe, maybe, maybe pushes that fight date back a month or two because it was a pretty nasty cut, and those are the kind of things that can you know set you back a little bit. So we're, we're going we're gonna to have to wait and see how that works out. But uh, he, was po he was poised enough to, to, to get the victory in. You know, it was a fun card, man. I, I like these cards. There was really good value. You know, we complain about Floyd Mayweather charging us eighty dollars for a crappy fight like a game against Andre Berto. But you know, tonight we, if you were a boxing fan and you heard about this, nine fights, fifteen dollars. It was mostly local Philly fighters. A couple guys made the pro debuts. Um, the other guy that I fought that I did watch, he fought after Jesse Hart, was Mike Reed, who I interviewed in. New York City at Madison Square Garden. He was actually supposed he was actually supposed to fight on the Terrence Crawford Hank Lundy undercard. And his fight his opponent, something happened with his opponent and the fight didn't happen. Mike Reed fought after him. Mike Reed looked pretty good. You know, the guy that he fought was basically an everlasting punching bag, but you know, he looked good, he did what he had to do. It was a it was a fight against a guy he's supposed to be and he and he won. He looked good doing it. So, you know, Mike Reed looks good. That that's a guy that's a, that's a guy for top rank that could you know, get himself a big fight within his neck within the next year or two. I really, I really think so. Mike Reed is a is a slick, 
southpaw, good punch, punch, play, uh, punch placement, explosive with his feet. Um, doesn't have devastating power, but he's he has more of that like wear you down power, that attrition power. Where he, you know, as the rounds go on, it's like an accumulation of punishment. He can get you out of there. So I liked Mike Reed. It was a joy watching him fight. It was a joy watching um that first fight. I don't even know the guys' names, but these these two guys fought the very first fight. It was the um the very first fight on the whole card on, on the undercard, and you know these guys gave it a war. So you know, shout out to Philadelphia. Shout out to um. Johan Promotions and Johan Boxing and all those guys for putting on a good card. Um, like I said, man, it's it's very it's very rare that in boxing that I can pay for a card, pay for any type of fight, and say that I got my, my full mo- my full money's worth. But nine fights, action fights for the most part. Um, you know, good prospects that are coming up in boxing. Uh, if you didn't watch this card tonight, you know you you missed out on the treat because the Deshaun Johnson Jesse Hart fight alone was worth fifteen dollars. So. Um, that's my take on the fight. Uh, let, let, let me know what you guys think. Jesse Hart has defeated Deshaun Johnson in a slugfest. He'll be fighting Gilberto Ramirez and Arthur Abraham, the winner of that fight, for a world title. Let me know what you think. Jesse Hart, is he the future of 168? And um, can he can he prove himself to be you know, a great fighter one day? Uh, let, 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 let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. Take the time to subscribe. And, um, you know... As far as TSS goes, I'm, I, I got a few interviews coming up on the channel. Um, I, I guess I'll just tell you guys now. I haven't really told too many people outside of people that I know personally, but I have um, two interviews line, lined up for sure um, that are going to be taking place within the next week or two. Um, I got to interview Travis, my time Kaufman. If you guys remember Travis Kaufman, he was the heavyweight that fought Chris Ariola. He got robbed on the decision. I got I to interview him soon. So Travis Kaufman, I'll be talking to him soon. And I got to talk to Adrian Granados soon. You guys know Adrian Granados. He was the guy that pieced up my boy Amiri Mom in their fight on the um, James DeGill, Lucien, Butte undercard. So I got those two coming up, working on a couple more, getting those squared away, maybe even some basketball stuff, uh, hopefully. But, um, yeah, man, let, let, let me know what you guys think. If you guys, if any of you were lucky enough to catch the fight, Jesse Hart, Deshaun Johnson, what did you think about the fight? What is your take, thoughts on Jesse Hart's future and career moving forward? Uh, leave your comments down below. As always, take, take, time, take the time to subscribe. And you could love me or you could hate me, but I'm just a kid from Dania. So until next time, take care, guys.